Hello guys, welcome to the video. This right here is the HP G60. It's a rebranded compact Presario CQ60 or CQ6. And uh, I'm going to uh, review it. Now this one comes packed in with Windows Set Windows Vista. So there, I'm gonna show you its details. As you can see, it has a very reflective and shiny plastic case. It's a pain to have uh, fingerprints on there. Luckily, the inside is matte, so you don't have to deal with that. So one cool thing about this thing is, um, well, there are two models: the basic model and the high-end version. This happens to be the high-end version. Thanks to its shiny keyboard that, that set it apart from the basic plastic black keyboard. So this thing still has its factory stickers. As a matter of fact, I got this brand new. So very strangely, it 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 came with a uh, Windows Windows Vista pre-installed. I got this brand new, by the way, and. It's not registered as HP, it's registered as Dell. It's a little confusing, but let's turn it on. This, of course, has Intel Pentium Dual Core. Uh, it's not that bad. The CD drive is a triple combo. This one's made by Lightscribe, which is uh, not your common brand, but it does... um. Um, increase uh, writing performance so that's um, one cool thing uh, now honestly I want to put all the hate aside because this is my first Vista computer this is actually really cool I like this so far the Windows Vista user interface is actually pretty neat I love it we're inside now sidebars loading in and by the way, yes, that is a gradient on the corner. This is a gradient. Now up here, um, we got recycle bin. And this is the same icons as Windows 7. And a very similar start menu as Windows 7. Windows 7 is more like a revised version of Windows Vista with uh, a lot of patches and um, it, it, um, and support for uh, unzipping files is also back which is strange because you can't unzip dot zip files you can't extract files which is weird so I have to put it back on another computer and then extract them there and then put them back on the flash drive and then bring them over here so this is it comes with Windows Media Center which is a kind of like a smart TV interface it's pretty neat. You got some stuff, internet TV, recorded TV, play DVD, set up TV. So it's pretty neat. Yes, it's a DVD player as well. It even has a Netflix, which is pretty neat. I, I thought Netflix was uh, more um, 2010 than, well, 2006. Anyway, I was actually stunned on how impressive this actually ran. It... So, you shouldn't use Windows Vista on battery saving or balance settings. You should set it to to high performance, which um, essentially makes it very much usable. And I like it. Windows Vista is actually pretty neat. It's definitely usable, but it's a little um um how 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 can I say this? Unorthodox. The part where you can't unzip files is crazy but from a corporate third-party perspective this is actually a good thing especially for WinZip so they can make a just they can make all money off of that so I bet you back when Windows Vista was a thing WinZip made probably a lot of money off of it and also it's good for preventing preventing children from un from extracting things that they shouldn't be extracting so it's pretty neat this this computer of course uses the um universal charging port uh which was used on dells and hps so i'm just using a dell charger 
right now just to demonstrate how it's compatible. I do have an HP charger, but I just decided to use the Dell charger just to demonstrate its capabilities. Don't know why Th this is like that. It should be up here. Okay. This runs really beautifully. I love its interface. It just feels so smooth. I don't know. Uh, maybe I can move the camera further in. That's good enough. But I picked this background, which is a default background. It's really cool. I love, I love it. It just adds to how cool this is. The background kind of reminds me of a Mac OS wallpaper. Mac OS 10, that is. And it's pretty strange how it kind of bring it kind of ha has that that vibe. Um, we got Windows Media Center, which is pretty neat. We got Google Chrome. Of course, it's not connected to the to the internet, but you could do that if you wanted. Um, just depends what kind of Wi-Fi you have. When Xfinity Wi-Fi no longer supports Windows Vista or XP, which is very strange. It only supports it if it's a Dell computer with their own proprietary Wi-Fi card. Uh, so that's one thing. Now, um, now gameplay on this thing is actually very smooth. This is the 32-bit version of Windows Vista. This is Windows Vista Ultimate, by the way. Uh, it's very smooth. Um, it runs at a good frame rate. Now, this is a very early Sonic fan game. It runs really good and smooth. I'm very surprised. There's no lag whatsoever right now. This feels so smooth. There's no lag at all. Of course, this computer was also sold with Windows 7 later on. Windows 7 didn't really slow down it that much, but since Windows 7 added a lot of 64-bit uh, features, and most uh, most of these came with Windows 7 64-bit, um, of course that would mean that it would be a little hardware accelerant on this thing, which is why it's better for this to run a 32-bit version. Which oh, okay, finally lag. Well, I was gonna say no lag. Finally, there's lag. But, believe it or not, this lag isn't un unbearable. The good way to test the hardware on one of these computers is to see if it can run a game called Crisis. It's a mid-2000s game that's essentially like a first-person game. Um, it was popular back in the day, kind of like Fortnite was in 2018. But, it's actually pretty neat. Uh, I don't own the game right now, but I probably would use it to test hardware. Hopefully it won't cause a blue screen of death. But that won't be such a big deal since it won't actually cause a motherboard to get fricked up. That only happens with viruses or um, hard drive corruption, which could, in fact, um, inter interrupt the motherboard. It's a very rare occurrence, but it happens. It's very common on IBM ThinkPad T60. Okay. So, this computer runs really good. This is definitely upgraded, upgradable to Windows 7 since it also came prepackaged with that. Um, you could definitely upgrade Windows 10. The 64-bit version must be voided at all costs. Uh, this would probably the 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 CPU and the motherboard will probably not like Windows 10 running. So, if anything, use Windows 10. 32-bit uh, or just don't use it at all because Windows 10 is very hardware accelerant because of its uh, so-called Metro features which actually don't make the user interface better but more uh, stressful and causes lag and stuff like that there is an old Samsung I have that ran originally on Windows 7 it uh, got affected heavily by the lag of Windows 10 and it is very much unbearable. Web browsing is extremely slow. When on my Dell XP computer, it's actually very smooth. And web browsing is definitely good. 
Uh, sorry for that. But it's not that bad, actually. I'm going to exit out of the game right now. This game is a fan game, by the way. It's not a real Sonic game. I don't have a copy of Sonic Adventure PC right now, since they're kind of pricey. But once I get a hold of one, it would be really cool to test out computers and their functionality with that. But I think this is all I'm going to show here. The, the Windows Vista user interface is actually really pretty, pretty neat. It feels really fluid. Now as for the windows, as you can see, uh, there's a lot of uh, reflectance here and a lot of transparency as well. It looks really neat and it feels very smooth to use. Having this transparency is a really nice ergonomic feel and it just adds to the experience. I really love this. Windows 7 and Windows Vista are one of my favorite versions of Windows. Now people saying Windows Vista is bad either results from actual um, experiences or people going along with the flow and saying what everyone is saying which is a very common occurrence. Most of the time it's because people didn't know how to use it. Like I said, you can't you can't extract files. Uh, doesn't have an extracting wizard. Uh, one other thing is that um, it has a very different user interface from Windows XP and people back in the day had a hard time adjusting to it which is why they usually downgraded to Windows XP even the, if the computer came with Windows Vista. This computer could run Windows XP, especially the 64-bit version, which would be cool. But Windows Vista just and Windows 7 are, are really good on this thing. Now, now what do I have to say about Windows Vista? It's not that bad. I actually, I'm actually pretty impressed with it. Also, one cool thing is the personalized feature. Um, window color and appearance. Uh, I see. It's pretty neat. Has a, it has a very strange feel. Now, when you change from an arrow theme to a non-arrow theme, the screen goes black for a second. This is technically still an arrow theme, as you can see. And it's pretty nice to use this. This is a Longhorn theme. But let's go back to let's go back to the arrow theme. Because I freaking love it. Windows Arrow is the best user interface, I think. And I think that it should return. Now let's go to arrow. Oh, it's not here. I guess arrow is included in Windows Vista. So I really love this. It's a really cool user interface. Of course the CMOS battery is dead, but I can definitely get that replaced. Um, now, Windows Vista, personally, is not that bad. I think it's uh, underrated. People say it's real so bad. Most of them are just going with the flow with everybody says, and they're like, oh, yeah, 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 Windows Vista is bad. Yeah, it's so bad. But honestly, I, 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 could, I could make an argument and say it's actually pretty neat. Um, maybe I can go to um, PowerPoint or something. Of course, it's going to show me the installation wizard even though it's already installed. It's really neat. Now, you can do all sorts of things. Of course, the... Of course, the, uh... The, the several problems with these include, well, 
their HP. Well, the HP Pavilion DV6, which um, uses very similar structure to it, it's supposed to be a um, media focused um, laptop, mostly desktop replacement. I mean, it's good and all, but it suffered from uh, a lot of uh, problems with um, power, display. HP in the mid 2000s to late 2000s, early 2010s had a problem with with weak displays. This one is actually this one is actually prone to that, so it should be treated with care. But if you're going to use Windows Vista, it's not actually that bad. Do not listen to what people say, do not listen to what people say. Most of them don't have evidence to back up their claim. Windows Vista is a usable OS that very usable and highly recommended and uh, it should be one of your top priorities Mac OS is compatible on here but hardware acceleration will be pretty common so be aware of that Of course that's that. Now let's change the background. There we go. Now we're back to normal. So I'm I'm been going on for way too long. So now some of the physical features include Alta glancing speakers, a very good ergonomic keyboard, very fond of HP from the early two thousands, mid two thousands to late two thousands. They really made good keyboards back then. Nowadays I'd say they pretty much suck. They suck. Horrible. All modern laptops have horrible keys. I just don't understand why they decided to make such a downgrade. And yes, it is a downgrade in my opinion. Now, these laptops can go around on eBay. They can range from 50 bucks all the way to 200 bucks. People would usually get these with Windows 10 or Windows 7. A Windows Vista 1 is a lot more common and a lot cheaper, but it's actually a good thing since it's better. And like I said, when you go to properties where it says computer, it's very strange because it says it's a Dell computer and I bought this brand new. So someone could not have used one of the Dell discs, but maybe the supplier did. I have no idea what happened with this thing. But yeah, it's registered as a Dell. Now, I don't know how the drivers are going with this thing. Pretty sure they work or something. Maybe not. I'm just not sure what's going on with that. I have to look further into this. The HP G60... Like I said, it's a rebranded compact, so I guess you could call it an HP compact series, a business PC. But it's not exactly advertised on, on the label here as a business PC. And they just, all they're doing there is advertising the advanced webcam, which isn't really advanced, it's just a webcam. So... Until I get my hands on the HP Pavilion DV6, this is all I can review for now. The DV6 I really want to review. It's a really cool laptop and it sold a lot of units, a lot. It That computer definitely says everything about, about the early 2010s. A lot of people bought that laptop. It was even redesigned to be more modern. So that's all I have to say. This laptop is pretty neat. 
Just take care of it. No vir don't get any viruses on here, and it'll be a nice laptop. This obviously has a lot of compliances. It's not exactly a normie laptop, but it's pretty neat. Now, this video is getting way too long, so I'm going to end it right here. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.